It's been looming for weeks, and it's finally happened. The two-year and the 10-year Treasury yields inverting for the first time since 2019. Joining us right now to talk about what it means for the economy and for stocks, we're going to bring in Michelle Girard. She's co-head of global economics at NatWest Markets. Also, Dana Daria, who is co-CEO at Invest. Uh, and let's talk a little bit about this, ladies. Dana, I want to go with you first. We had a pretty lousy first quarter, and you think these lower returns are likely to continue for the rest of this year when it comes to equity markets. Why is that? Because of this whole situation? Yeah, uh, I definitely think that we're looking at more lackluster returns going forward this year. I mean, obviously, uh, predictions on returns are notoriously uh, difficult, and we could have some news come in that changes the picture. I, I do think I want to say the economy is in a strong place, right? We still have a really strong job market. Um, corporate profits are, are doing well. Uh, we still have plenty of liquidity in the market. So it's not so much that I think that uh, we're necessarily going into recession, notwithstanding, you know, the inversion of the two tens. I mean, I'll say a quick point on that. Um, it has been a strong indicator as market indicators go, but we're also talking about a lag of, you know, anywhere from six months to three years for when these recessions show up after that uh, inversion. So you have to take it somewhat with a grain of salt. Um, but that being said, I think, look, you, you should prepare for it, right? You should prepare, prepare for markets being um, a little more lackluster, certainly than last year where we were having um, fantastic returns. Uh, considering all of the volatility that we're dealing with right now between midterm elections, geopolitical crisis, you know, China lockdowns, et cetera. Hey, Michelle, what's your take on the economy right now? Because just about everybody we ask says um, things are, are really blistering right now. It's a hot jobs market. Uh, you've got strong tax receipts that are coming in. When you look at all of these issues, you've got companies that are still posting some pretty strong results. Um, so the idea of a recession it, it, it may be out there, but it's hard to think that it's here anytime very soon. Well, certainly right now, the economy has shown good momentum, although I, I fear that going forward, we may see some softer news. And I actually think in the market, fears of, re of recession are going to in, in start to really, I think, move to the fore. You know, we, we've got the it's very short term uh, inversion of use tens. I don't I actually like to look at a broader yield curve three months to ten year notes. That's actually been more reliable. That's far from inverting. But I think we're going to see some deceleration in the data, potentially starting with this morning's payroll report. We actually have a negative Q1 GDP rate purely because of a big inventory drawdown, which actually in itself can be a positive, but nonetheless optically I think will be concerning. And the market is expecting a lot of, of Fed tightening. And I think that people are going to become worried that in order to really break the back of inflation, the Fed is going to have to take rates uh, into restrictive territory and might even have to you know, suffer a, or, or allow a mild downturn in order to get inflation in check. I think that worry is going to move to the fore in the next couple of months. Michelle, what, what do you expect with the jobs report today? Why, why would you anticipate softness? Because it, it seems to me employees or employers are hiring just about every worker they can find. And, and that's a real key, right, uh, uh, Becky, is uh, the workers that they can find. That has dogged us all along. We've always kind of noted the fact that softer job gains can often be more a symptom of supply than demand. But I will say that last month we saw some weakening in the survey data. Um, in the ISM reports, we saw some evidence that hiring was a little bit less robust. Of course, in the last month, we've seen a tightening of financial conditions um, as, as a result of, uh, obviously, the invasion of Ukraine. We've got worries about the Fed raising interest rates. It might have all come together to, after a string of incredibly strong job results, a month where the, where the reading is just a little bit less robust. So we're below consensus looking for only a gain of about 200,000.